Hi, this is Matthew Crater from Trader University. And today I want to talk about the Bitcoin halving, which happened yesterday, May 11th, as well as some new price targets for Bitcoin. If you're interested in learning how to make money in the financial markets in good times and bad, in bear markets and bull markets, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So yesterday about midday, uh, at least in the U.S., we got the uh, the Bitcoin halving or the halving when the uh, reward to Bitcoin miners was cut in half. Many people uh, have compared this to, for example, closing half the world's uh, gold mines overnight. So it's a real cut in the supply of Bitcoin. We can see it here. Bitcoin's currently trading at about 8,800. I'll link to this uh, dashboard here. This is my favorite dashboard. But if we scroll over, we can look under mining economics over here. Mining economics. Uh, bear with me. So uh, the block subsidy you can see right here uh, under mining economics, the first line has uh, been cut from 12.5 Bitcoin to 6.25 Bitcoin. That means if you're the first miner to complete a block uh, to solve the mathematical puzzle, the cryptographical puzzle, you get uh, you get paid 6.25 Bitcoin, which right now is equal to about $55,000. And what miners will typically do is they will sell this Bitcoin to cover their electricity costs, their data center costs, and their hardware costs to buy faster machines, faster uh, mining rigs. And so this is very significant. This only happens every 210 blocks in Bitcoin, which is roughly every four years. The last one was in 2016, and the next one will be in 2024. So one way to take a look at this is to look at the a, uh, a blockchain explorer, a block explorer, and I'll, I'll link to this one. This is just blockchain, blockchain.com forward slash explore. And you can see on the left here, left here it has the height, this, which is basically the block number. So right now, as I'm recording this, there have been 630,108 blocks done in the history of Bitcoin since uh, 2009. And the halving actually occurred at block 630,000. So 108 blocks ago, uh, this was yesterday. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So if you go here, you can click on these individual blocks to see what's inside of them. If we click on block, uh, it's the height number, but it's really a block number, 629,999. This was the last block before the halving. The miner was F2 pool. If we scroll down here, we can see that the block reward, the block reward was still 12 and a half Bitcoin, 12.50 Bitcoin. The fee was about one Bitcoin. So there's these two, there's the miner's reward, and then there's a transaction fee as well that the uh, the miner gets paid. So this is the block right before the halving. We can see that the block reward was 12 and a half Bitcoin. If we look at the next block, which was mined by Antpool, uh, it's the name of the miner, uh, block number 630,000, this was where the halving occurred. And if we scroll down, uh, we will see that the block reward dropped to 6.25. It's amazing. The software continues to work. And um, it's a much, it's a very, very elegant system. Now, one thing to note is that uh, there's a, always a lot of speculation that fees will have to go up in order to compensate for the block reward, the miners reward going down. We can see that the last block um, before the, the halving yesterday had a fee reward of about 1.06 Bitcoin. Uh, and then the, uh, the, the, uh, the halving block, 630,000, we can see that the fee reward actually went down. So the block reward obviously got halved, that's why it's called the halving, and, but the fees actually went down, uh, surprisingly. Now there's, uh, no one really knows how these will work going forward, but I think this is an encouraging sign. If we look at the most recent block today, we can see that the fee, uh, again, the block reward was, uh, we're in the new regime, so the block reward was 6.25, and the fee was just 0.26 Bitcoin. So just because the miners reward, the block reward, the, block, the minor subsidy goes down, doesn't mean that these fees have to go up. And we will see how they continue to behave uh, over time. Now, what happens when uh, the, the block subsidy or the miner's reward gets cut in half? Well, what happens is it makes a lot of old machines uh, no longer profitable. So these are this is a list of different Bitcoin mining machines. We have the S9, we have a mid-gen, InnoCanon. I don't know that much about this. I'm not a Bitcoin miner. Um, I think it actually makes a lot more sense if you have some money to just buy Bitcoin rather than trying to mine it. Uh, but there is an arbitrage here. And then there's the next gen, the S17. Um, but we can see that 
as as of this tweet, which was just a couple hours ago, Bitcoin was at 8,500. And at these prices, it's not profitable for any of these miners. So S9, the S9 mining machines are not making any money. This is assuming a certain hash rate uh, and as well as a certain cost of elect electricity. These look fairly reasonable to me. Uh, the mid-generation ones, the slightly more powerful machines, are also making zero in profits. And then the next gen, the S17, not the plus. So I guess there's probably a newer model than this. They are also making zero. So what this means is that the price of Bitcoin either needs to go up or these mining machines are going to need to just shut down permanently. Because under the new miners reward, they're not making enough money to cover their electricity costs uh, their data costs and their their hardware costs. These machines, at least according to Matt D'Souza, uh, comprise 30% of the Bitcoin network. So if Bitcoin does, uh, if the price doesn't go up soon, they're going to have to shut down all their machines. And the the more modern machines, the more energy efficient machines, the faster machines will take over. Now, what can happen when these miners shut down is, at least in the past, we've seen Bitcoin fall. Uh, I thought Preston Pish had an interesting tweet in response to Matt D'Souza here. Uh, Preston says, during the 2016 halving, the price went sideways for nine days, the price of Bitcoin, and then had a 28% drop. It took 100 days to get back to the halving price. So this can certainly, this can certainly happen again. Um, and then uh, Matt D'Souza responds that we had a longer, a stronger rally going into the halving than we did. Uh, we had a stronger ra rally in 2016 than we did just a couple weeks ago in 2020, so maybe this doesn't happen. Uh, there's a lot of debate. I have no real insight into Bitcoin's short-term uh, short uh, movements. I'd be very surprised to see a 28% drop. We could certainly see, uh, we could certainly see a drop. Um, but this doesn't, um, Bitcoin seems to be holding well above the 50-day moving average, and then above the red line, which is 200-day moving average. This is actually a fairly good uh, chart formation, and we will be, uh, almost certainly getting a moving average crossover here. We've gotten a couple fakes. This could be uh, the breakout. And certainly if we start trading above 10,000, a lot of people are gonna, are gonna wake up and notice. Now, in spite of these machines possibly having to shut down these Bitcoin mining rigs, we can see that the actual hash rate of the network is close to all time highs, which is very encouraging. So even though a lot of miners are exiting, there are new machines, new very powerful mining machines coming on and the hash rate you can think of is just the computing power of the Bitcoin network of all these different machines uh, working together. So the hash rate is still extremely strong. And what this really means is that people, uh, miners are just bringing in new, more powerful uh, machines. And these new powerful machines, they'll be able to mine at higher profit margins, they'll be more efficient. And so they won't have to sell as many Bitcoin and there also will not be as many Bitcoin to sell because instead of dumping 12 and a half Bitcoin each time they do a block, uh, they might want to hold on to it. Or um, even if they don't, if they choose to dump their entire miner subsidy, it's just going to be dumping 6.25 Bitcoin instead of 12 and a half Bitcoin. So if demand for Bitcoin stays constant or increases, we should expect the price to go up quite a bit. And if you stay tuned, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the price going forward. But right now we're seeing good, uh, it's a fairly good looking Fairly good looking chart, hash rate is strong. Now I thought I'd talk a little bit about Bitcoin's money supply because this is interesting. Um, total circulating Bitcoin, we can see this over, over a period of time. If we look at the all time rate, uh, we can see that it's sort of uh, flattening as it goes. And this is because fewer and fewer Bitcoin are mined over time. So right now they're about 18.3, 18.4, million Bitcoin in existence that have been mined. This is the money supply, the Bitcoin money supply. And we can see that that's about 87.5% of all the Bitcoin that will ever be issued. So they're only going to be 21 million Bitcoin ever. And of that total that will ever exist, uh, they're currently 87.5% uh, have been mined. And so we're fairly, we are fairly late in this, in this process. If we scroll, um, all the way over to the side here, we can see future supply of Bitcoin. So 90% of the supply will be, will be mined by November 2021, 95% by October 2025, 99% by 2034 in September. So this is a few halvings away. Uh, then 99.9% .9 of the supply completely mined. So almost 21 million coins by 2047. 
uh, all coins will be issued by 21, uh, 2136. But you can see that we're almost, the scarcity is already really kicking in. These last coins are just going to be um, partial coins. The last full Bitcoin will be issued on 2103. Uh, so right now the, the, uh, the number of new Bitcoins issued every every 10 minutes. That's how long it takes to make a block is 6.25. In 2024, that will be cut in half again to uh, um, three, uh, three and an eighth, uh, three and an eighth Bitcoin. So let's contrast this with fiat money supply. If we look at M2, the M2 money stock, which is a measurement of how many dollars are circulating or in existence, uh, we can see that this basically goes from 1980 when there were about 1. Uh, 1. 1.5, 1. 1.6 trillion, and now we're, uh, it just goes up and up and up over time. And unlike Bitcoin, this is not going to hit a peak. This is going to keep going up for the rest of our lives. And we can see what's happened in the last year because of um, all the stimulus needed, all the Fed money printing uh, due to the coronavirus, due to COVID-19. This chart is going uh, parabolic, uh, and this is uh, looks like a momentum stock, but it's not. It's just the U.S. dollar being debased as more and more are printed. So this number can go up a lot. It can keep going up. It'll keep going up for the rest of our lives. Bitcoin is capped at 21 million. So the money supplies look very, very different. One is one money supply is slowing down. It's sort of flattening. That's the Bitcoin money supply. The U.S. dollar money supply is exploding. And what this means is that uh, it will basically take more U.S. dollars to buy Bitcoin because there will be more U.S. dollars in in uh, circulation, in existence. And this is another way of saying that the price of Bitcoin is going up. Here's an inside look of the central bank, the Federal Reserve, printing money. Now, why do they need to print so much money? Well, the, one of the main reasons is that uh, Congress needs to spend a lot of money uh, we need to spend on defense spending. We need to f spend on uh, paying the interest on the national debt. But then, of course, there's all the fiscal stimulus trying to get the economy back together after COVID-19. So we've already learned that the U.S. Treasury is going to borrow $3 trillion in the second quarter of 2020, which is already more than they've ever borrowed in one year. So this is why we're seeing the money supply explode. I thought Mnuchin had a very... Uh, a very, uh, I would say, a very bad uh, take on this. Uh, this is the Treasury Secre Secretary Steve Steve Mnuchin, who's uh, an old Goldman Sachs guy. So you can know you can know who he's fighting for. He's fighting for the banks and the investment bankers. He says he's very comfortable spending, uh, issuing three trillion of Treasury debt because he can lock in very low rates. Uh, but why is he able to lock in very low rates? Well, it's simply because the Fed is buying these Treasuries, so they're issued by the U.S. Treasury. And then the central bank just prints some money and buys them. So it's a little bit like taking money out of one pocket to put it into another pocket. But as they do this, the money supply explodes and uh, devalues the dollar. And this is one reason why the money supply is going to have to keep moving up because uh, we're going to the U.S. government, especially when we start paying out real uh, large amounts of Social Security and Medicare to the retiring baby boomers, this this fiscal spending is just going to go up and up. And up, and all the money is going to be uh, borrowed uh, by one piece of the government, and then the central bank will just uh, print new money and buy the debt. So, what does this mean for the price of Bitcoin? Uh, there's a good article here I'll link to from Pantera Capital, Dan Moorhead, a really smart guy who's been bullish on Bitcoin for a while, and he's got a very nice chart here that shows uh, post Bitcoin having rally rallies and pre bit pre having rallies. So back in 2016, Bitcoin went up 241% going into the halving, and then it went up 29, uh, 2,910% after the halving. This time we've seen a smaller rally from the lows, 168% uh, off the lows. And then uh, we are entering the most bullish piece of the four-year uh, cycle, the four-year Bitcoin halving cycle. It's that 12 or 18 months right after the halving when you see the really huge price appreciation. And so according to uh, Pantera and Dan Moorhead, uh, we're looking at a new peak in Bitcoin around next summer, August uh, 2021, if, if everything repeats itself. Now, uh, if you look at, this is my favorite model to follow, all of Plan B's models, he's a very smart quant, works for a company that manages uh, more than $100 billion 
in the Netherlands. And so he has a way of modeling uh, Bitcoin using its scarcity, using something called stock to flow. And uh, this is basically a measurement of how much new Bitcoin is being produced in a given year versus the existing uh, base inventory of Bitcoin. So if you take a look, if you look at this paper, which I'll link to, uh, someone has done a nice job. A couple people have done a nice job of charting how this works. And so the uh, the red line here is the model price, and then we can see the actual Bitcoin price, and we can see that it tracks it fairly well. Uh, this model, this is not a spurious correlation. It exhibits uh, um, co-integration for those of you who know what that is. It's a little bit like a drunk taking his dog on a leash. They are always gonna, the drunk's gonna stumble around, but the dog is going to uh, always stay fairly close to the man because he's leashed up. And so we can see that the uh, the the uh, the price of uh, the price of the uh, the model maybe is the drunk, and then the dog is the market price of Bitcoin. It sort of moves around, uh, but it always converges to the model. Sometimes it's a little bit above, sometimes it's a little bit below. But so we're right right now. We are at uh, the model is pricing. Then now this is looking at a 365 day average of the. Uh, of the stock to flow, uh, but we can see that as we enter head into the summer of 2020, the price starts moving from uh, right now we are around 8,700 on this moving average model, and by uh, really by the end of this year, this model has moved up to uh, call it 31,000 on Bitcoin, so more than 3x from where we are, and then by the summer of 2021, we're up to 92,000. There are different versions of this model, of the Plan B model. Some say 50,000 uh, for this, this cycle. Some say 100,000. Um, and then there's an even more bullish one, which we'll talk about. But this is here's a great stock flow model chart you can take a look at. Here's another one by Digitalic uh, that does something similar. It also looks at the 10-day moving average of the, uh, of the stock to flow. And right now, we can see the 10-day moving average is at 77.65. So we're actually trading above that. We're trading above 8581, which is the 365 day moving average. Uh, but we can see by the time we get to, let's say, uh, September 1st of 2020, uh, the one price is at 15,800. And then the 10 day price, uh, the 10 day average is at 89,000. So no one knows exactly how this is gonna play out and with what kind of, what sort of volatility. We could drop 25% right here and then go up uh, 300%, 500%, 1,000, uh, 1,000%. Uh, but we're looking at it basically an order of magnitude going up about uh, about 10x, adding a zero to the price of Bitcoin. So if it's about 8,500 now or 8,800 now, we're talking about 88,000. Uh, again, this isn't meant to be a super precise model, but it does give you an idea of the order of magnitude that if the model is correct, you should make about 10 times your money over the next... Uh, over the next uh, 12, to, 12 to 18 months. Uh, and then the model, of course, after the next halving starts pricing in really unbelievably amazing prices, um, 1.1, 1.2 million per Bitcoin. Again, Bitcoin right now is about 8,800. So this is a way to make uh, possibly 100X on your money, in which case $10,000 becomes a million dollars. Now, Plan B has a new model that uh, uses uh, uses some other data from other asset classes. It looks at silver uh, silver pricing and stock to flow and gold, uh, physical gold pricing and stock to flow. And this model is quite interesting. I'm not gonna go into it right here, but he comes up with a higher price target for Bitcoin. And that price target is 288,000 for this period, for this four, four year period. Now what this is, is so this four year period from 2020 to 2024, this model suggests and again, it's a very robust statistical model. If you know anything about statistics, you can go in and dig in and, and see if you agree with this. Uh, but 288,000. Um, and one way of thinking about this is as a cluster price. And so Bitcoin goes through these different phase transitions. Uh, he, uh, Plan B compares it to water going from uh, solid to liquid to steam, for example. And so you get these various clusters as Bitcoin becomes... Uh, sort of a different asset class. And right now we're in sort of the financial, it's become sort of a financial asset. It's beginning to be accumulated by institutional investors like Paul Tudor Jones. The previous cluster under this model was around 6,700. And for those of you who 
have been following Bitcoin for a couple of years, you know that this has been a really significant number uh, for Bitcoin for the last four years. It seems like it's always, it's spent a lot of time around 6,000, uh, 7,000. It did brief excursions down to 3,000, a brief excursion up to 20,000, but sort of a cluster around 6,700. And these clusters uh, can be defined mathematically, some of the least squares, um, where you sort of minimize all the distances between the points. Uh, I'm not totally familiar with the math behind that, but the new cluster center is coming out at 288,000, which means that Bitcoin's gonna be below 288,000 per Bitcoin over this next four year period. It's probably also gonna be above it, but it'll spend a lot of time bouncing around 288,000. If so, it's the best investment out there. Uh, it's a little hard to believe this could happen. Uh, this may be a case of something seeming too good uh, to be true and, and not being uh, not being possible. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out. I think it's uh, this is a really interesting risk reward trade. You can put in, you can buy less than one Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, you can buy just a couple dollars worth of Bitcoin. Again, none of this is investment advice, uh, but you can you can buy a small amount of Bitcoin here, and you have a chance of making 10x, 20x, or 100x on your money. So we're going to see over the next uh, really 12 to 18 months whether Plan B's different models hold up. And uh, I think the worst case scenario, if his model holds up, but Bitcoin doesn't do as well as we think it's going to do, I think the worst case scenario is Bitcoin at like 30,000 or 40,000, which is still three or four times on one's money right here. But I think we're really going to be helped out by the macro environment, all this Fed printing, all the treasury issuance, the, the huge ramp up in the money supply is going to be a real a real driver of this and is i think is going to um, help us get into the 100,000 200,000 range and once the more bitcoin goes up obviously the more momentum players begin to enter it and there's a chance that we go way above these prices if institutional flows really start if momentum investors come into this especially uh bitcoin right now is the best performing asset of 2020 it's up uh quite a bit on the on the year and so if everything else is down, if stocks are still down, uh, there will be a lot of attention on an asset that goes up 50% or 100% or 200% in what's otherwise a difficult investing environment. Please hit that subscribe and like button if you found this video helpful. Let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.